Hey folks, it's that time again. It's time for TWIP Pro Photo Critique number 66. This is TWIP. Hey, welcome back to another TWIP Pro Photo Critique. This is critique number 66. Last week, we decided to break away from the thematic critiques and, and go with more of an open format and let people just sort of go free for all and submit whatever they want into the community. And we got a lot of really cool submissions. Here to talk about those submissions with me today is my partner in crime, fellow nitpicker, also <laughs> known as Troy Miller here on the hot seat, man. What's going on, man? Hey, Beanie Day. It's Beanie Monday. Oh, you noticed. You noticed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing this to make you feel good, you know? I know. I know. I know. You, you know, plus, you know, my hair is a bad, it was a bad scalp day, so I decided oh, to <laughs> I decided to put on that, you know, I didn't feel like doing my scalp. So I put on the beanie. Nice. <laughs> nice. What's been going on with you, man? Anything, anything happening in your world? Uh, you know what? I, I'm just working on a bunch of spicy jello content as always. I seem like that's what I'm always working on. And then, yeah. uh, prepping for F64, we got, uh, two and a half months, I think. So that's yeah, going to go by quick. <sighs> I know. I know. It's yeah, so it's going to, it's going to go by quick. So we got to. We got to get on the ball, you know, let's get our homework done before the night, you know, the day of, you know, were you, were you that kid that was doing your homework for the next class and the class before that class? <laughs> so I'm the kid that the teacher said that in order for you to fail, you have to try to fail. So I didn't try to fail. <laughs> so... <laughs> Look at that. I Aim didn't. high, you know. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I didn't try explicitly anything. try to fail because they told me that was the bar. <laughs> yeah. So, so I uh, I passed high school with a with a D minus and a lot of grace from somebody there. But oh wow, wow! Well, that would I I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall for that. Uh, the guidance counselor career counseling session. <laughs> oh, they didn't care. They didn't care. They, I mean, I, I had the I had the perfect, uh, you know, counselor that said, hey, you know, you don't don't worry about those SAT things like you can get off half period like you can go after, you know, right before lunch. If you take zero period, I'm like, that sounds oh, good. I have a geez. girlfriend. Let's do that. That was it. That was is this my, was this Ohio? This is Ohio, right? Oh, this was California. So in California. Oh, my God. Yeah, I swear. Yeah. <sighs> oh, well, yeah. yeah. It, it, but look at the man you are today. You're changing lives and crushing it. And there are more <laughs> photos that have changed lives out there that are that are due to your skills than, you know, than not. So good thing you didn't become like a doctor or a lawyer or something, <laughs> you know, un, untoward like that. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell now you know why I'm very anti establishment. So. I know, I know, I know. Well, that's a whole different conversation. Yeah, yeah. Um, you ready to dive into this week's submissions? I am. Yeah, I've got them all up here. Get them organized by date created. <clears throat> Mike Dorn's the top one, I think. Yeah, let me bring it up here. Let's see. Here we go. Yep, Mike Doran, number one. Let's bring him up. Mike says, my submission for this week's critique was created during my day on Saturday under rainy conditions. By the way, I was out on Saturday in rainy conditions in Lodi, California at the Lodi Wine Festival, sipping wine uh, in a torrential downpour. <laughs> so, oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, he says the event was, a, was round three of the NASA series held at Sonoma Raceway. He uses EM1X. A Zuko 40 to 150 2.8 lens uh, at ISO 400, uh, 1640th of a second at F8. F8. Um, and he says, anything you want to get good at requires practice, of course. Practice, practice, practice. So standing in the, in the rain hours on end to come up with that one image puts all your hard work into perspective. Enjoy, Troy Miller. What do you think? <laughs> Let's bring this up. Oh, look at that. Is that Grover? Is that the Cookie Monster on there? Yeah, it looks like that, huh? Yeah, I was going to yeah. say Grover, but that is not Grover. That is the Cookie Monster. No, no. It's it's cool. I like I'm, I like looking at the, uh, you know, how the tires turned and he's compensating for that slide coming out of that corner. And, um, you know, these are the kind of shots that, like, I wish I could see more abstract of, like, the tires hitting the water and 
and things like that. But great, uh, great peak action, you know, peak of the moment type thing. Yeah, for sure. I want to see a shot of the driver in anguish, you know, like screw the car, like get into the car, get a longer lens on there, get into the car. Let me see the driver. You know, right. I mean, if you can, they wear, they wear, they wear helmets in there, so you probably wouldn't be able to see them anyway. Right. But I don't know. Cool shot. And it's wet out there. I wonder if he meant this one for the water. For the water. Oh, yeah. Uh, that would have been a good one, huh? So, yeah, that would have been good. But still, good nonetheless. All right. The next one is for Armando Brook. Thank you, Mike Dorn. Armando says, this was in Ch- Chennai, India. I was uh, sitting in the street waiting to find something interesting to take a photo of when I saw uh, the daughter of the flower seller come over to hug her mother. Oh, okay. Let's take a look. Look at those eyes. I know. See, eyes and photos are just, you know, especially a little cute kids like this. Just ridiculous. You can't not like it. Right. I know what you're going to say, though. Can I Can I channel Troy Miller? <laughs> Only because you can see me uh, with my hand. <laughs> yes, I can see you. <laughs> yeah, so, well, go ahead. So we're, we're, folks that are watching this, we're in Skype, and I can see Troy. Uh, let me bring this up. So I can see Troy over there doing like this. <laughs> <laughs> so I know exactly what he's going to say for this particular <laughs> shot. So I won't channel you since you're right. I'm cheating. So what, what do you uh, think no, of the show? No, no, it's good. It's good. I mean, actually, we looked at this image earlier, and there was there were some things about it that you saw that I didn't see. So yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'll just start with you know what what a fantastic moment, a, a great photojournalistic, you know, emotional moment, very emotive. Uh, I just love this. This is this is this is great. Um, the colors feel a little bit too saturated for me, and I know that uh, Frederick pointed out earlier that around the yellow and that dark shadowy area um, in the lower left hand corner there is some artifacting along the edges I think it's been been pushed a little bit too far but yeah yeah that was that was the main thing I saw just the those colors I I tend to lean towards liking oversaturation I like mm-hmm. I like saturation I like things to you know have a little bit more clarity than than reality because I like I like photos that that show the aisle the ideal version of the scene you know as the as I would like to see the world versus reality because right you know, reality is not that fun um, but <laughs> but when you push it too far yeah those things like the the halo around the yellows and the colors in the background tend to give it away that you've done it. The secret is to do it without knowing so that someone looking at the photo will just think that's how the world is versus, you know, seeing, seeing your tracks. Right. And then under, <clears throat> under the mom's chin against her neck, it looks like there's a little, like a little burning halo there. Like it didn't mm-hmm. burn all the way into her neck. So yeah, I can, I can see that too, but I love the image. I mean, this is, this is fantastic. It would probably look really amazing in black and white. I knew you were going to say that. I yeah. knew you are going to, it would solve all those issues, right? It would. Yeah, it would. And you know, as much as, as much as the color is awesome in this, and I'm not saying it doesn't need the color because that's a very part of this culture as well. A lot of vibrant colors. Mm-hmm. Um, if it went black and white, it would be very, um, moodful and you would really be drawn into that daughter's face even more with those colors gone. So, uh, it would be great either way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I agree, but good shot. Beautiful, huh? Yeah. All right. Thank you, Armando. All right. Next shot up is from Mark Harris. <laughs> and Mark says, a friend asked me to join, asked to join me in the studio to see some of the ways I use studio lights. I hired this model for the session and loved her long colored hair. I posed her in front of a rectangular soft box and lit her in front using a strip box and a grid. I had him lift her hair, something I have had models do before, or I had her lift her hair, something I've had models do before, and uh, made this exposure with his D850, a Zeiss 85 mil at 1.4, F8 at 125th of a second, ISO 100. Let's take a look. You're the portrait guy, man. What do you you think? (laughs) Uh, it's a very interesting shot. I'm, I'm, you know, as I'm looking at it, um, the the mood with the hands up and the expression on her face. I'm, I'm tr- in the, a little overexposure in the background. You know, where her hair is is hanging there. Um, I feel like it needs to come down in brightness a little bit. And I wish that she wasn't making eye contact. You know, I, I think that that would be more moodful. So there's, to me, there's a lot of competing elements in this image that I kind of struggle with where to look. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like even even with a portrait, 
that that has a solo person in there, there's still, would you agree there's still a subject or sort of uh, the, the path of where your eyes go? Like in the case of someone, you know, what I'm trying to say is in a, in a shot like this, where it's just one person blank background, instead of it being a landscape with, hey, that tree in the foreground is your subject, this one, the subject is her expression or her face, and then mm-hmm. everything else is sort of secondary and tertiary. Is that, does that make sense? Yeah, and and I think that I think that uh, with that said, that it would be if we brought the exposure down a little, dodging and burning, so that maybe her face was isolated, her arms would go a little darker, um, the light in between her arms and the hair <clears throat> would come down, so it wouldn't blow out the hair so much. Create more mood with lighting. I mean, the direction of lighting and the and the quality of lighting's there. I just think it's it's too kind of it's too bright. We need to do some dodging and burning to kind of highlight those those areas for us to look and you don't like the you don't like the model making eye contact with the camera i struggle with it because i'm not quite sure what the what the mood of the photo is right like for me i'm just i'm just not i'm just not connecting with her looking at me holding her hair up in the air oh you mean like what's the story why is she doing that right Yeah. yeah yeah like if she was like if like if she was flinging her hair and her and her and there was movement in her hands and the hair was kind of out and her eyes were down, you know something like that I could get. But it's just like her looking at me holding her hair in the air and I'm I'm kind of and struggling her, with her, the story. Her, her expression isn't particularly seductive or anything, so it's not like she's just right, trying to very be neutral. Yeah. It's very very Mona Lisa neutral. Yeah. Okay, I get that. See, I learn something every time. <laughs> All right, next shot is from Torben Cool, and Torben says, "I'm experimenting with infrared and may." Uh oh, this is Troy. Troy's ears perked up. <laughs> yeah. As soon as I said infrared, you perked up like a meerkat. Uh, I'm experimenting with infrared and made this image on an afternoon walk today. After upgrading to a Fuji XT3, I converted my old XT1 into infrared. Exciting new world. Suddenly, I use my old camera more often than my new one. He processed this image in Capture One, but after years of using Lightroom, it'll take some time to get used to it. Yeah, welcome to the club, buddy. Um, <laughs> it's probably, I will probably return to this spot and try again when the ice on the lake to the left has melted. I think I could simplify the image. XT1 F4, IS, uh, 180th of a second, ISO 200, 23 millimeter. Uh, he says he would have stopped the lens down more, but after F4, he gets issues with hot spots on the lens. Maybe he should try focus stacking. All right, let's bring this baby up. All right, what do you think? I, I, I know really you're going to say it. something about those power lines in there. Those don't bother me. You know, I, I think I like the power lines and they're breaking up that sky. And, you know, with <laughs> with the tele, or telephone pole lines or whatever they are, with those going off into the distance like that, I think I, I like those as a compositional element here, believe it or not. I, uh, I you like don't the like them. Lines. I know you don't. You don't like them. <laughs> I do. No, no, no. I like the power lines. I don't like the power poles. Um, so what I would do is is I would crop off the right hand side and get rid of those poles and just allow oh. the lines to disappear and be that leading line into the, what would be the right hand frame. And I'd crop up a little Brilliant. bit from the bottom and off the right, and then those those lines will lead you, you know, from the beginning of the top left and then out of the frame, top right, and kind of bring you back in. I think those are great. I think we know what they are. Yeah. We don't need to see the poles connect. So I think I like I like that little mystery. That's Plus, brilliant. there's not a brilliant. Yep. There's not a whole lot going on on the right side of the frame anyway. Yeah. So you could you could crop that. Um, I like the I like the lake with ice. I think it adds a nice texture. Otherwise, it's just going to go black. Mm-hmm. So this is this is very cool. Very cool location. I, I I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'll buy that. I uh, I have to be honest. I didn't even think of cropping off the right side there. But doing the Troy Miller and holding my hand up to the screen. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That would that would look good. Crop off a little bit from the bottom and a little bit from the from camera left, our right, and uh, bring it in and have those have everything sort of converging in that vanishing point, you know, because all the lake, the the hills on the left, and the landmass on the right of the frame, and those those uh, telephone pole lines would all sort mm-hmm. of lead your eye to that to that corner, right? Yeah, and and I like the graphical element of those telephone pole lines, of the lines in in the sky, the the wires, but not the poles. Yeah, I like it. Love it. Cool. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Thank you, Torben. All right. Next shot up is from Eric Pronsky. And Eric says, 
uh, walking <laughs> past the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Uh, there were massive crowds around the tower, limiting an interesting photo. Across the street was a wall that had several of these oval-shaped openings. I used the opening to mask out the crowds and frame the tower. I then shot several images of people walking past the opening in the wall. I like this one the best. I pulled out some shadow detail in the woman, but not too much, so there would still be good contrast between the woman and the tower. ISO 224 mil, 40th of a second, F18, um, with his Sony A7R2. Let's bring this up. All right. Yeah, very Talk niche. about using foreground elements for composition. <clears throat> right? Yeah, no, it's 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 really interesting. Um, my first impression when I saw this, I love the composition. I like the I like the movement of the people. I like all of that. I just think the whole thing is too bright. And um, Eric, you mentioned bringing up your shadows in this to bring out detail, but I think that you need to, you know, block up those shadows. Let those shadows go super dark, mm. and uh, not not pure black, right? But the the tower is overexposed in comparison to the rest, and I think that it would do better to bring those tones down, bring those shadows down. You don't, you don't think he should have rotated this so that tower is uh, straight? Because <laughs> it's leaning. <laughs> yeah. I had to get that in there. You know. Come yeah, on. I know. It's, I know. You it's dad humor, like man. It. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's not vertical. That's not good architectural photography. No. Come on. You could fix that in Photoshop. Yeah. There but I go. like it. I mean, I think it's I think it's a great use of your environment and leading lines and foreground elements and stuff. I just think that it's uh, the shadows are open too much. I think you need mm -hmm. to bring them down. Put some mystery in there. Yeah, you don't need to see all of her face. You can just see, you know, her wispiness. Mm-hmm. Yep. Very cool. All right. Eric, thank you, sir. Uh, moving on down. Michael Rhino. I know that guy. All right, Michael Rhino, Michael Rhino says, I spent a long day at Yosemite arriving just before sunrise and leaving just after sunset. This is one of my early photos that was taken at Valley View moments before sunrise. I had this area of Valley to myself while setting up the shot. Shot with his Nikon D850 with a 24-70 Tamron F16 ISO 64 at a half a second. Let's take a look. That is so cool. Yeah, that is, that is just cool. ridiculously pretty. <clears throat> I love that. Yeah, there's there's so many images in here. Um, I just see so many so many different in crops. a good way or or overwhelming way. Like you want to see what is it? What's the name of the fall on the right? I forget its name. Bridal Veil. Yeah. So you you think it? I saw you hold up your hand. So you would <laughs> crop just that side and make that a separate photo, and then El Capitan on the left side and make that a photo. Well, yeah, there's definitely that. There's also just the the tree line, the shore with the tree line, and just the water. I love I love that. And then then there's the center, right? Just if you crop off, you know, maybe half of the left, or maybe the the left quarter, and then the right quarter, just lose Bradovale Fall. Mm -hmm. I know it's we're losing the fall, but for those that have been to Yosemite, it becomes more of an abstract type mm -hmm. shot right mm -hmm. so you've got the the sunset you've got the tree line you got that beautiful reflection in that smooth water um or just leave it cropped the way it is i mean i think that i think there's a lot going on it does <laughs> <laughs> i had to do it man i had to do it that's <laughs> what i'm doing though isn't it <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's going to do that on every photo now. You're just going to look up and see me do it. I know. I know. <laughs> um, it does look like to me like there was some uh, dodging and burning that went on, some some burning that went on in the sky, and it didn't quite make it down to the tree line. So on the left, you know, the, the tree line, it's a little lighter down there. And then especially in the back, um, on, that, on that little mountain in the back right-hand side, I can see like – it's it's light blue at the bottom and it's dark across the top. If that's natural, I would still I would burn that in. If it's not natural, then that just means you still probably should burn that in, mm -hmm. so it matches. Okay. Yeah, but I like it. Very yeah, cool. Aside shot. from all that, I like it. <laughs> no, but I mean, it's like you know, to be to be fair, you know, you can look at any image and just be like, okay, this is beautiful, but I, this is what I would do. Yeah. You know, well, that's the whole point of these critiques is to to give. 
you know, even it's a, if it's an excellent image like this, what would you do differently? You know, or what would you change? Cause, and like, uh, who was it? I think it was Lamb or, or someone in the community commented that, you know, uh, about how image critiques are very subjective, right? And, and, oh, yeah. and purposely so. They're subjective and opinionated. And, you know, it's art. You know, it's people that create art critiquing others' art. There's never going to be a right answer. But, you know, we can give our we can give our informed opinions, I think. Right. And think of it as like inspiration. You know, we mm. go and we, we go to galleries or we show our work to our friends or other people or competitions and critiques. It's all about inspiration. So when you're there, uh, you may you may go, ooh, you know what? There's three images in this frame. I'm going to do the big one and then I'm going to go in. I'm going to shoot these little ones, you know, and that that's really what it comes down to. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really like this shot. This this shot definitely, even as is, I agree with your your comments about you know, extracting different images out of it. But I think even as is, this is one of those that if you print this big and frame it, it's going to, you know, it'll it'll stand up on its own for sure. Yep. Yeah, most definitely. All right. And that's a good spot to shoot from. That's a pretty cool spot. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Michael Rhino. Thomas Aaron's up next. And Thomas says, in case you were wondering, this is not a composite. Hella, the dog, was running from behind Christy, the handler. Thanks for that clarification after <laughs> We only need to know one of their names and we can make the inference of who the other one was. <laughs> when she tossed the Frisbee, these two are a well-oiled team and disc dog competitors at the national level. Who knew? Uh, I've been waiting for months to work with them and I finally had the chance this past Friday. So I thought I'd use it for the open category critique. Oh, wow. Let's take a look. Look at that. Yeah, that is great. That is great timing. I, I love, I love, you know, how the handler is, is, is Christy is looking up at Hella, you know, just watching her and the contact there. I yeah. wish there was a little more separation between the two of them. Oh, um, so like the dog is like completely airborne? Yeah. You know, well, like it's completely lighter. airborne, but you mean not crossing over her body? Yeah. Plus, this feels like it was shot with a long lens. You know, look how big the building is in the background. And then, you know, I don't know how far Christy is behind uh, Hella, but it, it, probably not too far. But the long lens compresses everything mm -hmm. so much that we don't get a lot of depth. Um, if this was shot wide, then Hella would feel big. Christy would be smaller in the background. Hella could be isolated against the sky, really show a lot of depth. I mean, all of that being said, I love I love the shot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's what I see when I look at this. I'm like, ooh, wide angle. Get in there with a wider lens. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, I dig this shot. What a, yeah, long lens. And what did he say? Did he say what shutter speed he shot this at? No. Uh, no, he didn't. He didn't. I'm curious. Yeah, let us know what uh, what the shutter speed for this one was and what the lens you used. So I, I want, I'm curious if it was a really long lens. I'm guessing it was his 300 or his, what do you get? Like an 100 to 300 or 100 he got a long lens recently so on a full frame body yeah i'm betting he shoot, shot this really long okay very nice doggy all right craig stanfley's in the house thank you thomas aaron uh craig stanfley says pre-event testing for car 971 at simmons plains raceway in tasmania a few days before the start of the target tasmania 2017 Oh, look how sharp that is. Jeez. Look at the name on the side of that car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, how'd that happen? Wait, his, his name was on there a bunch of times. Is that real? I mean, wait a minute. Craig, I don't know. You're, you're holding out on us. Are you a photographer and a race car driver, or are you a Photoshop manipulation specialist? Like, what is going on here? Do you think that's real? Yeah, it looks It looks real. I think he's I think he's sponsoring the car maybe. Wow. Check that out. We need we need more detail, Craig Stanfley. Come on. You <laughs> yeah, can't you can't throw a card like that down and uh you know and not give us some sort of ex explanation. Yeah. I, I do think there's a lot of cropping that can be done in this image though. I don't I don't think we need the the mountain in the background mm -hmm. and crop off to the right, just to the right of uh like the tire power. Mm -hmm. signs so get rid of that, that pole yeah you want to keep yeah. tasmania in there for sure right yeah yeah crop it a little tighter mm -hmm. 
yeah, get rid of the get rid of uh, that right side. Keep Tasmania. Lose a little bit of Sky. What about the what about the pull on the left? Would that be cropping it too tight? Yeah, I think that would be that'd be too tight. We'd probably lose the beginning of Tasmania. I mean, it wouldn't be hard to clone that out if that if that pole was going to be distracting. But mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, we have a lot of we have a lot of space we don't need in this on the far right and the top. Yeah, I dig it. But I need the yeah. story, Craig. I need the story. Yeah, yeah. Come on, you can't put a race car shot like this in there with you your know, name on it. Without, yeah. a, a Mike Doran, we're going to need to see a uh, a car with your name on it flying around the track now because Craig, <laughs> Craig Stampley has thrown down the gauntlet. Here. <laughs> Very cool. All right, who's up next? Peter Levshin. Have you heard of that guy? Yeah. Peter says he says he says with remorse. Yeah. Um, Peter says Sony A7R3 24 millimeter f1.4 later afternoon island of Sumba, Indonesia. Now my most favorite place on earth to take pictures of trees and the people are people are all very low key and friendly. I really like this shot. I do too. I like the yeah. choice of lens, that wide lens. I like the the distortion around the edges of the frame, and the I like the color choice of the, sort of the muted brown green earth tone background with the with the little girl dead center with a bright red contrasting dress and polka dots. It just doesn't <laughs> fit. <laughs> just, uh, and I was like, how did little orphan Annie get way out here? You know, <laughs> right, right. And then, no, the, then the gas lantern there too is really cool. Yeah, it's a very emotive shot. I mean, it's it's really nice. It it conveys a lot of emotion. I like the I, I do like the dark tone with that red in there. Mm-hmm. Um, I am struggling a little bit. The the left, I, I would probably crop in the left. Get rid of that bright leaf patch that's mm, on the left mm-hmm. and obvious <clears throat> this is obviously lit by a much larger light source yeah. so we're getting a lot of light spilling on the leaves and on the ground in front of her and it i think all of that needs to be brought down so that the focus is just on her yeah. um you know aaron nace you know aaron nace from flurn.com mm-hmm. right i've seen uh photoshop tutorial videos where he would do a shot like this and uh, even kick it further to simulate that the light is coming from that lantern, you know, like put gradients, you know, make a layer and yep. put like a gradient halo in there with a lens flare and all that. And, you know, make a selection and have light beams shining down on her. Would you have gone mm-hmm. that far in here or is that too much for something that is that is supposed to be relatively photojournalistic? I, I would do it. I mean, you you know, the, the cool thing is that you can do a lot of those type of things in Capture One. I mean, you can create light beams and, and all that kind of stuff in the, the luminosity masking and stuff within mm-hmm. Capture One. So, yeah, um, I would definitely do it. This is this is very storytelling. You know, yeah, this is, yeah. you know, illustration, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I would probably the way the scene sits right now is I probably take the lantern out because mm-hmm. it doesn't it doesn't really add anything to me and the light direction is wrong for the lantern. Um, yeah. Because of the, and, the, and the quality of light too. Right. Yeah. No. It, and if, yeah, if the idea is that this whole scene is lit by that lantern, yeah, that lantern would have to be much more powerful. Right. You know, so either, either get rid of the lantern, bring all that down, dodging and burning, get rid of those hot spots on the foreground and the leaves in the background. Um, I think that, I think that would make a big, a big, big, big difference. Lovely. Definitely. What about expression? Do you think, you think she's looking off to, to, you know, to the right of the frame camera left? Um, should she be looking at the camera? You think it would be more powerful with her making eye contact with the camera? I I think that it's, it would be powerful both ways. I would certainly, I would certainly hope to get a shot of her looking at the camera and sort of decide how that works. I, I think that, that would become a portrait, right? Where mm-hmm. it's it's seeing her face, where this is more of the environment, like her in her space, you know, or her sitting there reading a book, or you know, uh, something like that would have been yeah. nice. Yeah. Yep. And she's got something in her hand there. Is that like a? Is that a camera or something? I was trying to look at that, and and, and it's hard to say. It, it looks like it's. Well, there's some sort of strap there. Yeah, there's with, something with in words there. on it. Maybe it's a trade show badge or something. I don't know. I can't <laughs> <laughs> this was a set at WPPI. Exactly. 
exactly. now I'm guessing from looking at her dress on her on her um on her shoulders, I'm guessing that that black that we see hanging down there is probably like trim for her dress that may have been torn or tattered a little bit. Her hand looks like maybe she's holding her dress. I, I look, I just thought the same thing though. It looks like she's holding something. Yeah, Peter, yeah. you'll have to let us know what that is. You were there, so let us know what she's holding, if anything. Cool shot though. I like that shot a lot. Yeah, yeah, definitely one of my favorites. All right, Michael DeRay is up next. And Michael DeRay says, Tree in the Bay, my submission for this week's open critique. OMD EM10 Sigma 19 millimeter at F63, 1 640th of a second at ISO 200. Edited with a combination of Capture 112, Affinity, uh, and DxO Optics Pro 11 because I like borders. Look at that. Yeah. I'm going like to start that. a new organization. I'm going to call it Photographers Without Borders. And all we're going to do is <laughs> <laughs> full bleed shots. <laughs> no, never. No. I like I, this I one. Love it. I love this it. This is I an illustration. This could be in a like an old timey book or something like Aesop's Fables or something, right? Yeah. I, I feel the, the vignette is a little heavy and the horizon's crooked. Um, mm. It feels like it's lower on the left. It is. Oh, you know, yeah. I can. I feel that too. I have to put it in Photoshop to, to be sure. Uh, nope. It's definitely lower on the left. It is uh, almost a quarter of an inch. Yeah. Mm. Um, and you know, maybe maybe you corrected it uh, for the tree, so the tree felt better. But um, yeah, uh, really... so the so the trunk was vertical, more more vertical. Yeah. If you rotate this to the right. It looks like the tree is already kind of leaning to the right. Mm -hmm. And if you rotate it more to the right, it's going to be more obvious. But I would argue yeah. that the, uh, the the horizon, we all, that's one of the things we as humans see almost every day, right? So we expect a horizontal horizon unless, right. you know, you're, you're wearing, you know, shoes with one heel worn down or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but your body compensates, though. So, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> And then, and then we have a little bit of cloning artifacting going up on the right hand corner, uh, not all the way to the top, but you know, you see those little white puffs yeah. in there. Mm -hmm. It looks like it was a lens flare or sensor dust or something, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. I but I mean, this is this is this is a ninety percenter, right? Like this image is ninety percent amazing, ninety percent. There's a couple little tweaks that I would make, mm -hmm. but I, I love this. This is this would go in my portfolio folder for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and I look at this shot and I think, I think, wow, a model would be awesome leaning up against that tree or <laughs> sitting at the base of that tree or something. Right, right. Yeah. And you think, oh, a bride would be amazing in this shot. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Yeah. yeah right? You know? yeah. yeah. With a red veil. With a red veil. There you go. Flowing in the wind. Love it. All right. And this was Michael DeRay. Thank you, sir. Cool shot, Michael. I like that a lot. Very cool. All right. Lamb says, oh, this is the shot I was talking about where he said not every judge has the same idea. And uh, I think he was making a statement about critiques because uh, the shot says the background is too light. Should darken it a bit, says one judge. The next judge says not really. The back, bright background makes the man stand out even more. <laughs> And then on and on about the comment. I think this this was a commentary on the subjectivity of critiques, which is the whole purpose of critiques. It was if, right. if, we, if we all had the same you know opinion, what would be the purpose of a critique? Right, right, absolutely. Yep. So I don't know if he submitted this for any sort of critique, but I'm going to assume not. I think he was just trying to make a political statement. Uh, let's see, William Bannock is up next. And William says, uh, cuckoos at dawn. Oh, look at those things. Jeez. What are they? Uh, they're evil vermin. No. <laughs> 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 he said, many would agree the photographer out at the crack of dawn photographing sleeping bees is the cuckoo. Uh, but that is all, that is in all probability very true. The bees are cuckoos too. More precisely, the cuckoo leaf cutter bees, I believe, the you're just doing this to mess with me, aren't you? <laughs> Coaxalis Texana. 
because we needed to know that name. These are <laughs> native bees and kleptoparasites. Oh, I know some people like that. They lay their eggs in the ground nests of the machil bees and feed on the pollen stored there. Oh, like cuckoos. Yeah, like the cuckoo bird. You know, they, uh, they lay their eggs in other birds' nests. Right, right. Uh, I am constantly amazed with the structure and the details of the bee. Hitting the trail early will often reward the photographer with the bee still roosting in plants as seen in the attached composite. Oh, it's a composite. Hmm. Uh, let's see. This is a. F I just want to see this rig. Okay, so this is. He shot this macro with a tripod rig, 45 image field stack. Initial raw conversion and adjustments done in DxO Photo Lab, stacked in Zerine. I have never heard of that. And touch up in Photoshop. Wow, that's a lot of work. Yeah. <clears throat> Look at that. So there's a comp. That's a composite. Let's bring that up. Yeah, the sharpness is is fantastic. God, look at that. I'm itching just looking at this shit. <laughs> I love this. Yeah, I do too. I love the detail in it. Look at that. Like all the way down to the individual hairs on the backs of the bees. Yeah, even zooming in on, on Mighty, um, there's more detail as I zoom in. I can actually see the texture in the eyes, you know, the 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 bee, the multi-lens eyes of the yeah. bees. You can actually see that texture going on in there. So, yeah. Yeah, Mighty, Mighty didn't, didn't uh, bring out the... The Thor hammer on this too much because those normally those areas those wide swaths of gradient colors it doesn't do mm -hmm. well with right yeah I, I would you know zooming in on this <clears throat> um, I would I would do an abstract crop on this too just just to be fun because you can get in so 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 tight and you know pick an area that you just really love and just crop it because you can just see so much especially the bee that's upside down yeah. I like that. My only my only suggestion to the image for a slight improvement would be that bright upper left hand corner. Um, I would darken that down and make it green to match the background and get rid of that little arced uh, flare or whatever it is coming off the far left bee's wing. You can kind of mm -hmm. see how it arcs up to the right. I would just get rid of that color, basically. Just just make it you know a little bit darker and fade into green or stay green, so that way you, we don't have that distraction of that yellow. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then I think you have that, to be wondering what it is. Yeah. 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 Because it draws your eye out because it's a different color. Right. So it's going to pull your eye there. Yep. So. All right. Very nice work. I like these open, these open critiques. Yeah. All right. Next shot is from Joshua Sutterfeld. And Joshua said, I'm told my monochrome abstracts really bite. He shot this with his 77D <laughs> with the Tamron SP AF 90 millimeter F28 uh, DI or D macro and 90 millimeter um, <clears throat> F13 for 3.2 seconds at ISO 100. Yeah, look at that. That is that is an abstract. That is one of those shots you have to look at, right? To uh, kind of... Right, to kind of see it, yeah. Kind of see what it is. I feel like we've reviewed this one before. I don't know. Maybe I was just talking about it with someone. But look at yeah. it. Like, if you look at this close, you see the the patterns on the sides of the snake's head look like eyes, right? It look like almost right. like Spider-Man type eyes. But its actual eyes are at the tips of those little things. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it took me a minute to find the eyes because I was looking. Yeah. Yeah, that thing looks sinister. I do love this in black and white because it makes it very abstract. Mm -hmm. You know, it's almost at first glance, it's almost hard to tell what it is. Yeah, you can see the individual scales on there and everything. This it's, this could be a dragon. <clears throat> it is a dragon. It is a dragon. There be dragons. I love it. I love it. What a good shot. What a good abstract. Yeah, Joshua posted another shot of a snake um, uh, earlier this week that is my desktop picture. <laughs> so, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I may have to take it down. I've gotten comments on it. You got a snake on your computer. That's awesome. All right. That was Joshua Sommerfeld. Thank you, sir. And I think these, we didn't review these two down here. I think they came in after after the wire on the water critique. So you want to take, take a look at them now? Yeah, let's do that. Because I think, um, well, Peter's uh, is, his, is his bicycle. And so mm. he can't. Yeah, he's not going to be in for this one. Yeah. So but if you if you scroll down on Peters, uh, you'll find an amazingly cropped and tuned black and white by his friend. 
Oh, we'll take a look at that one. Let's oh, yeah. look at this drone shot first. This is in oh, Kona, yeah. Hawaii. Look at that one. Look at the textures. Wow. Look at what Earth can make. One layer, two layers, three what, three or four layers of different different textures of our planet right there. Yeah, that is awesome. I love all that. Yeah, you yeah. can make that huge and just stare at it for a long time. I wish there was a, a, a little shark or something uh, over there. Yeah, you know? that would be cool over the water there. Yeah. Yeah. Or a shark and then, uh, you know, maybe an inch away from it, somebody sunbathing on a little rubber raft. <laughs> <laughs> Photoshop, you can do it. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, I know. I love all these textures in here. This is really great. This is really great. Maybe maybe crop a bit off the right side because, you know, when, when you start from the left, you got all these textures and colors and different texture and color and then the water, different texture and color. And then we leave the sort of the whitewash and it and it becomes a little bit more sedated. Mm. You know what I mean? It's more calms simple. down. Yeah. Yeah. The frequencies die down. The frequencies. Yeah. yeah I dig cool. it. Yeah. You totally can get lost in this. I'm getting lost looking at the shot. <clears throat> This makes me want to go buy my Mavic Air. Did you buy that Mavic Air, by the way? You have one? No, no. I bought a, a I bought a DJI Pocket though. Oh, you did? Even holding out on me? Pocket. I didn't know you got one. When did you get? I that? just got it like yesterday. <laughs> oh, we gotta talk about that when we wrap up. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. Last shot of this session is from Peter Levshin. And Peter shot this with his A7R3 24 millimeter. It's a water bike, very hard to ride. Well, yeah, he, <laughs> he showed this during our uh, during our Twit Pro um, member mixer. Yes, yeah, yeah. This is what we talked about. This mm -hmm. this image is an is an image that I I really really love, and he's got a good series of these. Um, but I always felt it needed to be black and white and cropped, so. I did. If you scroll down in the in the chat, there it is. Ah, look at you put in the rule of thirds. Okay, yeah, I like that. I like that. Yeah. Better. Sorry, Peter. I like I like this processing version better. <laughs> it's just more graphical, you know. It just it just changes it. And, and although the colors are really cool, I want I wanted to focus on the bike. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, I dig it. I like it a lot. Let's go look at the original again, real quick. So here's the original. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then here's Troy's interpretation of that shot. Yeah, I do. I like this one better. I like this one better. Yeah, I can definitely see this in a nice, glossy, black lacquer frame hanging up on the wall. Yeah, it's good. And he's got a lot of these. He's got a whole wonderful series of this of this bike. So he, he'll share more, I'm sure. I even like the hint of where he is with the bodegas in the background there. Right, right. It's a slight hint that, okay, this is probably not in the USA. Yeah, that's not Huntington Beach. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's not Kansas. Oh, I dig it. Cool. Very good shots this week, huh? Oh, yeah, there's some amazing ones. I'm, it's, hard to, it's hard to choose. Yeah, yeah. I think I have a pick, though. I think I have a pick. What do you, what do you think? What's your, what's your favorite? <sighs> I'm, I'm, I'm actually torn between Peters and uh, William Bannock's. Um, which one was Williams? Oh, that was the bees. Uh, bees. Yeah, I'm I'm really torn. I mean, I really like Peter's because I like the storytelling that goes on in there. Uh, but the bees are technically well. I mean, just the symmetry is is so wonderful in that image. And then technically, that's super hard to do too. Yeah. So I'm kind of on the fence. I'm gonna I'll be happy with whatever you choose. Oh come on! Look at that. Yeah, I chose last time. <laughs> whatever yeah i like this one too but i gotta you know my favorite i think i'm gonna have to go with peter levshin's yeah this one um because i i like the processing of it i like the the moodiness of this shot uh you know i don't know i like all i, I like a lot of things about this shot including you know the this sort of sub subconscious feeling when i look at the shot of those trees look like they should be huge but then you have this little girl there right that's giving you a sense of scale and letting you know that these are little pygmy trees or whatever you know it's just yeah i don't know i just like the shot a lot i like the red and little orphan annie dress on this girl that is someplace that i've never been before uh, hopefully we'll get to one day um but yeah i like this one a lot this one's my favorite yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I fully support you in that. I think that's I think that's a killer image. So yeah, good job, Peter Levshin. Congratulations, man. 
Right. All right. All right, Troy Miller. So tell me about that Osmo Pocket, man. You got one finally. Yeah. After him and Han for months, you finally so, got one. What do you think? I haven't shot anything with it except my cat. I photographed my cat with it. So <laughs> that's about it. To, oh, to you got the it. little mount, the little uh, the little thumb uh, pan and zoom thing. Yeah, well, it came. It's it's a kit, so you can buy a kit, and it comes with the little thumb thing. It comes with the uh, wireless, like it's like a Bluetooth controller on the oh, bottom. Yeah, so you I, need, do, I need both of those things. Yeah, I'm jealous. Yeah, so you can do hyperlapse, which is what really turned me on with that. Is I can do hyperlapse with that, so I can plug it in, and then um, it has a battery port on the back, so I can actually plug a battery, like a little little portable cell phone charging battery, and mm-hmm. run this thing for like 20 hours if I want, nice. and do sweeping hyperlapse and so i'm gonna i'm gonna play with it at weddings and and stuff like that you know set it up and control it from my phone and yeah that is cool that is cool yeah i gotta get i may order that tonight i need that little base my dad has one of those um actually did he buy that piece i bought him the osmo that was his father's day present last year I think oh it was. cool um but he uh and then he went and bought all the accessories so now he's all kitted out and mine is still you know, <laughs> not <laughs> so. and then that kit also comes with um this little guy so it's a mount that you can that you can snap open i don't even know how to snap it open but um and it has on the back i think it's like a gopro mount i think that it's is just exactly like a, a gopro standard mount yeah yeah so then you can attach it to anything that you would normally attach a gopro to or something like that. so i think that's pretty clever oh that yeah is. See, so it just pops is. open yeah yeah i love it all right you're spending my money troy miller you're spending my money <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, I need that. Yeah, those things are cool. They just uh, they just did a software update not too long ago. Did and it fixed it, it improved a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yep. So. As as software updates are known to do, Troy Miller. Just saying. Well, you know about the new <laughs> Z7 and the Z6 software update, right? The new firmware. No, what they fix or what they that add? Badass update. I mean, I, okay. So I know you Sony shooters are like, yeah, we've had eye autofocus for a long time, and I don't know if Olympus and Lumix and stuff does that too, but. Um, they pushed out that firmware to give you eye autofocus, but what they really improved was... Wait, what the, is eye autofocus? Means it, it'll pick the nearest eye and focus on it? Mm-hmm. Yep, it'll, it'll start on faces, and then it grabs the eye, and then you can move from eye to eye while you're shooting. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, we've we've had that on yeah. Lumix but, for, uh, since, I think, when the Declaration of Independence was signed, <laughs> that's when they added that feature. <laughs> But the big improvement for me, because I don't care about the eye autofocus because it takes too long, um, is they improve the low light focusing in the mm. traditional focusing methods. So it grabs focus better in super low, soft contrast light, which has always been a struggle for me with mirrorless. So it it's amazing. No, yeah. Are you are you using your, your mirrorless Nikons more or the same at weddings now? Because I remember when you first started using, you were like, yeah, I got to rely on this old stuff because I know it and it's mission critical and I'll I'll shoot with the mirrorless every now and then. Are you still doing that or has the mirrorless taken over? <laughs> the mirrorless is taking over. <laughs> yeah. D5 is for sale. Uh, 24 to 70, 28 is for sale. I'm, I'm you know... I'm going to get a Z6, another Z6. And- welcome, welcome, my friend. I knew it. See? See? The water's fine. I, I knew as soon what? as you got into a gas-powered car from a horse, and you're like, you know, I'm going to try this gas-powered car. No, you know, If no. I like it, then I'll maybe I'll ride it more, but I'm going to stick with my horse because, no, you know. <laughs> no, it's not like that. Yeah. Mirrorless, mirrorless hasn't been able to focus fast enough in yeah. low light for me. I mean, the Sony especially. So with the A7R Mark III and then the updates with the the Nikon Z, um, they're there now. I mean, I can I can honestly say that I can get the same stuff I would get with my D5 and my D850 that I wasn't able to get previous. So that's uh, that's a huge improvement. That's good for me. So look at you upgrading your kit though. That's cool. I see what's going yeah. on here. You got the yeah. new Osmo Pocket. You got you're like moving on and you know going <laughs> both feet into mirrorless. You know, I'm I'm seriously not to digress and we can end this, but um, you know how you get that 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 sort of you know like itch where you got to buy something. My itch has been I want to upgrade my my uh, my DJI Mavic Pro. So I love my Mavic Pro. It's like brand new. I love it. You know, it's kitted out, three batteries, multi-chargers, all that stuff. So I love it. 
Uh, but I I made the mistake of actually holding the Mavic Air. <laughs> yes. That is... It's so little. I'm like, oh, man, this could go in my bag. I don't have to worry about having a separate bag for the drone, you know. Oh. And I got a buddy that uses that uh, professionally, and it's amazing. At Like at a wedding, he can pull it out of his bag, fire it up, fly it with his phone, yeah. Right. Fly around and do what he needs to do. And he put it away. And it's so quick, yeah. which is which is really what I want in a drone anyway. Yeah. So that's what I want. See how quickly I, we digress. <laughs> you're going to get one. You're going to get one. I, I got it. Yeah. I'm going to I got to sell my Mavic Pro because I'm not going to I don't need a bunch of drones laying around. I'm like some people. You know, they buy a bunch of stuff and then just let it lay there. I can't do that. You We're know? not talking I've, about me. I Well, you know who you, it's like the telltale heart. You know who I'm talking about. <laughs> if you're listening to the sound of my voice and you're feeling guilty, you know who I'm talking about. We love you, buddy. We love you. But <laughs> you got a you know, addiction is real. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm looking at that thing. I want to, I want to shoot with, in fact, I was, you know, I got to justify everything. So I was like, okay, what if I, what if I get rid of the Mavic Pro, sell it, you know, maybe to a Twip Pro member or something, somebody that needs it, give them a crazy discount and then, uh, use the proceeds of that towards the new drone. And my, my goal will be to use that new drone to shoot the promo for F64 live. Huh? Ooh, huh? Ooh, huh? I'm down with that. Now I have a reason for the drone. <laughs> <laughs> or I could say, you know what? I'm gonna shoot the entire promo with DJI stuff. I'm gonna shoot it with the with the drone and with the with the pocket, you know, and that's it. So, and I already got a brand new audio recorder. I got the uh, well, it's not new, but it's it's new for me. The uh, Zoom H1N. Have you oh, heard of those? Yeah. The little one. Yeah, so I got one of those. So I'm happy with that. I already had two of the H1s. Now I have one H1N as well. So I know I have a problem. So what? <laughs> <laughs> the first step is admitting you have a problem, Troy Miller. So That's right. Okay. Then we go get new gear. Then we go get no, new gear. Yeah, it'll be okay until the next new gear comes Yeah. Up. No, but I don't have a lot of stuff. Uh, so... Uh, Speaking of new stuff, I had a chance to, as you know, go down and hang out with the Peak Design people uh, last week, um, Friday, which is why I couldn't make to to the Twip Pro member mixer. Um, but they are releasing a new product. You know, these are the guys that did the Everyday Messenger bag and the clip where you clip your camera to your belt. They made that thing. They made, you know, a bunch of things. So uh, they're announcing their Kickstarter for this new thing that they're making um, tomorrow afternoon. So as we record this, it is Monday, the 20th of May. So on the 21st in the afternoonish, late morning, afternoonish Pacific time, us Pacific time, they'll be announcing something brand new. So check their site out and you'll see what it is. I got my hands on it. I'm going to play with it, maybe do a video about this thing, but I can't talk about it in specifics because it's still secret. But uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. Troy, I know you're going to buy one of these things. Speaking of, you know, <laughs> money and buying stuff that, you know, you you, you got to justify somehow. <laughs> so, so, cool. After F64. After F64, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got to get that through that. Yeah. There you go. All right, man. Uh, where should people go to connect with you and uh, see the stuff that you're working on and see other videos of you with that beanie on? Uh, spicyjello.com, which also leads into Spicy Jello YouTube channel and Spicy Jello Instagram and <laughs> the Spicy Verse. I love it. The, oh, nice. Spicy Verse. Yeah. See what I did there? <laughs> See? You should get, uh, what's his name? Sean Spicer to come on and be your, uh, be your affiliate or something. No, don't <laughs> yeah. do that. Don't do that. <laughs> All right, man. Take care. Uh, we'll see you. We'll see. Oh, you know what? We didn't pick a topic for next week. We need a topic for next week, or should we just let it ride and do general again? Do let's think? do open again. Yeah. Okay. All right. You this got is it. a good showing. Yeah. We'll do. Yeah. Let's do open, and then we'll come up with some good uh, some good themes to follow that with. You got it. All right. You heard it here first, folks. Troy Ad- Troy's your advocate. He says uh, we're going with open. So open is the theme. So submit whatever you want, as long as it is, it, it is uh, safe for work, and uh, you know we'll go from there. We'll see you guys next week. Awesome. All right. See you, Troy. All right. Take care, bud. Bye. This is Twitter.